What's up, guys? Welcome back to Fit Body Seekers, where my mission is to bring you guys motivation, inspiration, and tips to help you guys on your fitness journey. And today is probably one of my favorite topics to talk about. And I actually made an Instagram post about metabolism today, started writing up an email for metabolism today, because it's one of the things that a lot of people like to focus on, and they don't really understand the metabolism <laughs> metabolic rate or any of those things. And today I'm really excited to break things down a little bit for you guys, especially for those of you guys out there that have heard like you've got a damaged metabolism or, you know, dieting is ruining your metabolism. And I want to help you guys understand what's actually happening so that you guys can be more educated and obviously set yourself up for success this year. If you are, in a place where you are trying to lose some fat, um, or obviously if you're in the opposite end, like me, trying to build some muscle, some ways that you might be optimizing your metabolism. We're going to get all into this kind of stuff. So I'm going to hop over to my comment and say a quick hello. Hello, Megan. Hello, Holly. Hope you guys are both having a great hump day. Um, I actually don't normally record podcasts on Wednesday, but I'll be honest, yesterday I just wasn't feeling great. Um, I just felt very distracted and I actually am going to re-record the podcast because I felt like it didn't didn't flow the way I wanted it to, which is part of like, you know, just me being a perfectionist. So, um, and there were some things I didn't really cover. So you're probably going to say, see that one come up again and be like, didn't we talk about this already? So if you do, thanks for coming on live. You might get a little bit more out of the other one. So anyways, today I'm fired up. There's a few things that I really like talking about. And, and one of them is the metabolism. Uh, before I get into that, I just have to tell you guys, I'm coming off of a deload week. And can you guys relate to like when you've taken time to like not work out as intensely or as hard when you actually start to work out again, you are super sore. <laughs> and I know my friend Lindsay, she took time off last week and she's like, I'm going to be so sore when I start working out. But when I went to the gym this morning, my legs were like, oh man, like right now I'm like, I don't even want to sit in this chair, but I'm sitting, I'm getting it done. All right. So so let's dive in. Let's talk about the metabolism. A lot of people out there have heard the term like metabolic adaptation and metabolic, you know, compensation or damaged metabolism, but don't really understand what's going on. And, you know, you've maybe heard you're not eating enough to lose weight, or, you know, if you, if you don't eat breakfast, you're going to sl slow down your metabolism. Or if you are, you know, eating, if you aren't eating three meals or if you're not eating, you know, frequently throughout the day, you're going to slow down your metabolism. You hear all these crazy myths. So I want to talk a little bit about starting from the scratch. We're going to talk about what the metabolism actually does. Now, the metabolism isn't really a thing. First and foremost, metabolism is a process. Metabolism is the process of converting the food you are consuming into usable resources in the body. So it's going to start by you're going to be converting your proteins that you take in into amino acids. Your carbohydrates are going to get converted into glycogen. And your fats are going to get converted into fatty acids. And this is also going to jumpstart the process of absorbing the vitamins and nutrients from your food. So metabolism is the process. It's, it's not actually a thing. What most people are referring to is their metabolic rate. And this is your basal metabolic rate or interchangeably, some people can say your resting metabolic rate. Your basal metabolic rate is essentially the amount of calories your body needs just to sustain life, just to, to lay in bed, keep the lights on upstairs. It's not thinking, it's not, it's not using your hands, it's not moving around, it's not eating, it's not, it's not really doing anything. Essentially, you're just laying there like a vegetable. You know, that's essentially what your metabolic rate is. And it's a, it's a basically it's made up of five things: your age, your height, your sex, your weight, and your in your lean muscle tissue. So when it comes to metabolism, most people are referring to their basal metabolic rate, as I've already said. So there are a few conditions out there that can impact our metabolic rate, but most of them, once corrected, no longer have an effect on our metabolic rate. One of the moments that you guys are most common with are going to be hypothyroidism. But once these things are treated... Um, your metabolic rate is functioning like every other normal person. That's the purpose of treatment. Um, so that's really important for you guys to understand because a lot of people focus on, you know, hormones and thyroid and all these things and that that might be affecting their metabolic rate. But once you've gotten, gotten treatment for those things, it really doesn't have an impact on your metabolic rate. 
what does have an impact on your metabolic rate more so is the amount of body fat you have, the amount of lean muscle tissue you have. So if you are significantly overweight, you have a higher metabolic rate than somebody that's lighter than you are because that fat tissue is heavy and your body, it's like wearing a weight vest. So it does require more energy. As you lose weight, your metabolic rate will decrease a little bit because you're not having to carry on or carry so much excess weight. So losing weight does often lower your BMR. Now, the flip side of this is that a lot of times when people are losing weight, they are focusing on working out more and lifting more. So the opposite can sometimes be true because you might be building muscle tissue as well. And lean muscle tissue does also increase your basal metabolic rate. Having more lean muscle tissue increases the amount of calories you need at rest. And muscle tissue is very expensive. So it's important for you guys to understand that if you are in a fat loss phase and you're trying to lose weight, you should always be prioritizing getting in enough protein and lifting weights to really make sure we are maintaining and building lean muscle mass. Also, things that happen is if you are significantly overweight, often there are a lot of medical conditions that accompany being overweight. And it's the chicken or the egg scenario for a lot of people because they like to blame the hormones and the conditions for why they can't lose weight. But the reality is the excess body fat has created a lot of those hormone imbalances. A lot of our body fat does have a huge factor in our hormone balance in a number of different ways. So by losing body fat, you're actually optimizing your hormones even more. You're getting your body into a more hormone, a better hormone profile. So that actually can improve your metabolic rate. So, and this is where it's really hard because a lot of people and gives tangent is they feel like their hormones are the reason why they can't lose weight. And that's not really the case. The case is their hormones being imbalanced has their metabolism not functioning as well. So they do require less calories. Their body's being a little smarter and stingy with their calories. So it does require a little bit more restriction in their diet than they would like it to be. However, as we lose body fat, hopefully hormone profile starts to get a little bit better. We can start feeding more food. So kind of, you know, a little tangent there for those of you guys. Okay. Now, so that's your basal metabolic rate. That is metabolism. What most people are referring to is their basal metabolic rate. They're like, how can I fix this? Like, is this actually damaged? And we're going to get into that. Okay. The next thing that I want to talk about is the difference between metabolism and speeding up your metabolism and understanding that what most people are looking at is their energy expenditure, your total daily energy expenditure or your TDEE. Okay. So when most people are talking about like they want to speed up their metabolism, the issue is they're trying to lose weight and it doesn't matter how low they drop their calories, they can't seem to get any of the weight off. Okay. So your total daily energy expenditure is really what people should be looking at. All right. Obviously, yes, we're always trying to be building muscle to increase our lean muscle tissue. That's going to have an impact on our basal metabolic rate. But the bigger picture is our total daily energy expenditure is what most people should be focusing on. Okay. This is the number of calories that we're going to be burning throughout the day. And it's a combination of your basal metabolic rate, which makes up the majority of it, the thermic effect of feeding, which is how much, how many calories it takes to actually digest the foods that you're consuming, your non-exercise activity, which is the amount of calories you burn throughout your day, watching this video, listening to me on your head, in your headphones, um, walk into the grocery, you know, walk in from your car to the grocery store, cleaning up the house, taking care of your hair, all that stuff. And then you've got your exercise activity, which is the time you spend in the gym. Okay. A lot of people focus a lot of effort on the exercise activity, but it actually, for most people, makes up the the, the, lit, the least amount of their energy expenditure. You know, you're probably going to burn somewhere between two and 400 calories in your workout. So it's really what you're doing outside of that, that matter most. Sometimes maybe you might get five to 600 on a, a longer Metcon day, but it's typically going to be a little bit lower. You can obviously increase this by increasing your cardio, but most people don't have time for more than a, a 30 to a 60 minute session. Okay. So the majority of the calories we burn are going to be mostly determined by our non-exercise activity. That's really important for you guys to realize. And this is why as a coach, I always look at steps throughout the day and naturally 
I try and see where a person is getting their steps in. So they're not because once we actually are intentionally adding steps in it, it does kind of, you know, walk the fine line of like, is this actually exercise? Um, but just throughout the day, how often they're moving. And then we might actually add some movement in to make them more active throughout their day, whether it's just making smart choices when they go out, they're parking further from the, you know, from the door, they're, you know, making decisions to walk more, they're getting up every hour and maybe taking a quick, you know, walk out to the kitchen and do some dishes if they're at home or at the office, they're just taking an extra stroll, like whatever you can do to get up and get moving a little bit, to be more mindful of not sitting all day and living a little bit more of an active lifestyle is what I'll typically focus on. Um, now, the next thing to talk about is uh, energy balance. Well, let me take a step back because there is one more thing that I want to talk about there. The thermic effect of food is another thing that we can optimize a little bit. And I'm going to get more into that. But people don't understand that different types of foods actually are going to require you more energy than others. And I'm going to get into that. But I wanted to touch on that a little bit. Okay. So now you guys understand BMR, your basal metabolic rate. That's what you're really looking to improve. You understand total daily energy expenditure and where your BMR factors in there. Now let's talk about energy balance. Um, and when we're talking about energy balance, we're talking about calories. Uh, when we have a net positive in calories, we are in a calorie surplus, we are going to gain weight. So when we are eating more calories than our body's needs, uh, we're eating over our total daily energy expenditure, we gain weight. When we are in a net negative in our calorie intake, we are going to lose weight. So when we're consuming less calories than we're burning, we are going to lose weight. And when our calories in and our calories out are equivalent, we are going to maintain weight. So it's really important for you guys to recognize that calories do matter. And that's why as much as people like to avoid looking at calories, it's important to look at that. Now, the other thing to understand is that one pound of fat is the equivalent of 3,500 calories. So when we're talking about net positives and net negatives, you're not going to see the fat changes on a day-to-day -day basis. This is why consistency in your diet is so important. Um, the calorie positive or negative is more so we want to look at the accumulation over seven days and it's even longer, 14 to 21 days. That's really going to give you a better understanding of what energy state you're in. You know, so we're not looking at today I'm in a deficit and tomorrow I'm not like we can look at it that way, but we're not going to see the changes on the scale. When we're just looking at the day to days, we're looking at the overall picture. So this is also a little note for you guys out there that struggle with perfection. If you're always trying to be perfect, recognize that like you really just need the majority rules. So it's your average intake, the majority of the time that matters most. Okay. Now I don't want to oversimplify the calorie, you know, the, the fat loss and, and the metabolism and all that stuff. There are a lot of things that are going to impact um, your calorie intake and your calorie expenditure. And this is where it's important to just not go online, find a calculator and, you know, ask yourself like why this calculator isn't working. There are some more intricacies to it that you want to make sure that you're taking a look at, you know, those are great places to start, but it's not just a simple equation because there's so many things that can affect the calories in and the calories out. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like being outside, you know, or like living without a roof over your head, you know, like, you're literally at the mercy of like, what's weather going to bring you today, right? Is it going to rain? Is it going to hail? Is it going to snow? There's a lot of things unpredictable that are going to happen. And some things that are predictable, but we have to take a look at the mismatch between um, obviously just a simple equation and what might be going on under the hood. Okay. So first thing is let's look at calories in what can affect our calories in. Uh, one of the most common ones is a mismatch between the calories eaten and the actual calories reported. So this can happen in a number of ways, unintentionally, you know, under underestimating how many calories you're consuming, you know, guessing on portion sizes, forgetting to log specific things, also eating more packaged foods. Guys, the, the nutrition facts on packaged foods can be off up to 10 to 15%. So if you're consuming a lot of processed foods, this can be a problem. If you're eating out a lot, this can be a problem. Another thing that can affect your calories in is the types of foods that you are eating because some foods are more digestible than others and some foods you're going to absorb more of those calories than others. So this can also affect your calories in. Um, so now we talk about what can affect your calories out. Okay, so that's going to affect your calories in. Calories out 
can be affected, as I've just kind of sensed, is not only the amount of calories you absorb, but the types of foods you consume are going to require more energy than others to burn off. So like foods that are high in fiber and high in protein are more thermogenic than foods that are lower in fiber and higher in fat. So knowing that, like the types of foods you're consuming, even the macronutrient breakdowns of those foods can actually increase or decrease um, your energy expenditure. Physical activity, I already kind of mentioned that. Um, Non-exercise activity are all going to affect your calories burned. And I'm going to go more into metabolism and, and obviously some effects of dieting that also negatively impact all of this stuff shortly. So just bear with me right now because I'm trying to keep it straightforward for you guys. And it's a lot to cover today. And I love, love, love this topic. Okay. So now you understand metabolism, you understand energy needs, sort of, um, and you understand energy balance. Can we truly damage our metabolism? Can we truly damage the process of converting stored energy, or I'm sorry, energy we're taking in and converting that into protein, I'm sorry, into amino acids, fatty acids, into usable energy by the body? The short answer is no, you can't. Your metabolic, your metabolism is not just going to stop working. Metabolism, the process of metabolism doesn't just stop happening. Your body is always metabolizing, but there are some things that might slow it down a little bit. I already mentioned some of the conditions, the, the thyroid, other conditions, uh, Cushing's disease, I think is another one. Okay. If you think your metabolic rate is damaged, okay. Or I'm sorry, if you think your metabolism is damaged, it's really not the process of metabolism that is the problem. Okay. The problem is, is something called metabolic compensation and metabolic adaptation. And neither of these things are a negative. They just end up being a negative because now it's making it harder for you to lose weight or maintain your weight loss. Okay. But essentially what these processes do is protect your body from death. They are literally put in place to ensure that the energy you're taking in is dispensed where it needs to be to keep you alive. And that means that you're not going to burn calories as well. Your body's going to try and store things. It means that you're not going to feel as good in your day. Your body's going to try and conserve energy. It doesn't want you burning a bunch of calories. So you're going to see differences show up. Okay. So let's talk about what these two things are. Metabolic compensation essentially happens when we eat less. So as we are dieting, we're dropping our calories down below total daily energy expenditure. Our body is going to start to sense that. And in the beginning, you'll normally notice pretty consistent weight loss. And then it typically is going to fizzle off a little bit. And you're going to be like, what's going on? I haven't changed a thing. And all of a sudden, my weight stops moving. I've been doing the same thing. Why is it not moving? Okay. So what's happened is your body is now outsmarting you. Your body is saying, okay, I'm having to utilize my stored energy. I'm not getting as much energy in. As I said, this process happens over time. It's not the day-to-day -day calorie deficit. It's over time. It's going to happen. And your body's going to compensate to try and protect you. You're going to start to, you're not going to notice this all the time, but like things like you're just not going to be moving as much. You're going to kind of, you're going to take shortcuts and you're not going to realize that this is why but you're not going to want to, to walk further to get to the grocery store. You're going to find yourself wanting the closer parking spot. Other things that you don't realize happening are like things like you're, phys you're fidgeting less, you're blinking less, you're doing all of these other things. Your body is trying hard to conserve energy. Uh, you're not going to feel as good in the gym. Maybe you're feeling a little bit more sluggish. And it's just, it's one of those things that people don't typically happen as a drastic change. It kind of slowly starts to happen. And this is also why... We don't want to make huge drastic changes in our calorie intake without optimizing first at, at maintenance. It's also why super restrictive eating needs to be matched with obviously enough calories. So, and really we shouldn't be doing super restrictive eating. We always want to make sure that we're optimizing everything first. Now, metabolic adaptation is, is kind of like what happens with compensation, Metabolic have adaptation happens as a combination of the compensation patterns that your body's developed and the changes in your body composition. So as I mentioned, as you lose weight, you are going to burn less calories at rest. So that's a little bit of an adaptation. Vice versa, when I build muscle, 
I'm getting a positive adaptation technically because now I'm burning more calories at rest. At rest. Okay. So when you lose fat, you will burn less calories. When you build muscle, you will you will burn more calories. And as we optimize our nutrition and our body composition, our metabolic rate goes up. This is also why, like I mentioned, you guys should always be focusing on building lean muscle tissue. And secondly, always working on ensuring that you are optimizing your calorie intake as much as possible before dropping into a fat loss phase, that you're not obviously going to end up disappointed when you're not seeing those results or it takes so much effort. Okay. Now, metabolic rate changes are important to understand that they're not the same for everybody. It's not like every single person is going to have the exact same response to changes in their diet. Um, diet history plays a huge factor in this. So how many times you've dieted, what types of dieting protocols you've had, um, how long you've been in a deficit for, all of that stuff is going to matter. Um, and something that I like to con- always remind people is, um, so maybe you have somebody that has never been overweight. Let's just say they're five foot five, 155 pounds, and they've never really had to lose weight. They're like solid muscle, uh, female, and, um, they need about 2,800 calories to sustain life with their training or whatever. Um, somebody that has dieted down to be five foot five and 155 pounds might only require 21 or 2,200 because the adaptation that has happened to get them there. That is a real thing. So that's why you also can't compare yourself to somebody else. And also why online calculators aren't great because they're kind of a good place to start, but it doesn't consider that kind of stuff. Okay. So hopefully now you guys understand a little bit about the metabolism, your energy expenditure, energy balance, and what's going on that might affect that energy balance. Okay. Now let's talk about a few things that are definitely true that you guys can take away. And then I'm going to give you guys some tips for optimizing the metabolism. Okay. So when it comes to metabolic damage, we're really referring to metabolic compensation and metabolic adaptation. I want you guys to understand this. The more drastically you diet, the more impactful it's going to be on your metabolic rate. The more frequently you diet, the more impactful it's going to be on your metabolic rate. Those two things are very important. Most people should be spending more time at maintenance Unless you are significantly overweight, like you have a lot of weight to lose, you should still be doing this in a moderate way, but you should be spending the majority of your time closer to maintenance and then dropping into fat loss phases. Okay. Um, I like every 20 pounds or so for a person to take a break. That's a good amount of metabolic stress. And then they take a break. Okay. Prioritizing losing weight without strength training will negatively impact your metabolic rate. So if you are somebody who's like, I'm just going to lose the weight and I'm not going to work out, you are literally just going to end up being a fatter, smaller version of yourself. Essentially, you're going to be the same body, but you're going to be smaller and you're going to have a negative impact on your metabolic rate. So I know people think that it's okay to lose weight without working out and that's fine, but recognize that you're not going to really change how you look. You're just going to look smaller. Okay. Um, Under eating long-term, this is a big one, will negatively impact your metabolic rate. Now, This is only the case, like I said, if you don't have a significant amount of body fat, because if you have a significant amount of body fat to lose, your body will have quite a bit of time before we're pulling that body fat storage off um, or before we're really, you know, getting to that place of uh, what's I'm looking for. I shouldn't say pull up. Let me me recap. If you are in the obese population, okay, you have a lot more wiggle room with this because you have so much excess body fat. If you are not in that population, you definitely don't want to be under eating long-term because it will negatively impact your body rate. The closer, the closer you are to like a good, uh, uh, normalized body fat percentage, which we'll call normalized for women between 20 and 25%, um, men between 15 and 20, the more negative it's going to impact your metabolic rate. The leaner you are, the more effect it has on you, put it that way. Um, So that's really what I wanted you guys to understand about the metabolic rate. And those are a few takeaways. Now let's talk about if this is you, you're like, man, it doesn't matter what I do. I can't lose weight. I I know this is me. I just don't know how to fix it. I'm in this cycle. By the way, let me just tell you that one of the effects of this whole condition is your appetite is out of control. And so if you're somebody that's judging yourself because you feel like you can't control your appetite, this is likely part of the problem. So you might want to take some time to do some of the things that I'm going to tell you right now. 
Okay. Because this is where we can really optimize things. And this is going to be the, I want to call this the not so sexy stuff. All right. I'm going to talk first of all about optimizing your meta met metabolism, your, your metabolic rate. And then I'm going to talk about optimizing uh, your total daily energy expenditure because they're not the same thing. Remember that your BMR is a part of your metabolic, I'm sorry, your BMR is a part of your total daily energy expenditure, but that's a percentage of it. The other stuff matters too. Okay. So let's talk about optimizing metabolism first. Number one, lift them weights. Lift them weights, ladies. Let's go. Now, if you're a CrossFitter, there's a little bit of a problem with this is, um, I shouldn't say a problem, but if you're looking at weightlifting, like snatches and clean and jerks, but you're also not proficient at those movements to actually be moving, uh, loads, you're practicing, you're not weightlifting. You are, you are using light weights. Your body doesn't sense that as a strength movement. It's a skill based movement. So when I'm talking strength training, you should be doing things like squats, presses, deadlifts. Um, even a lot of your CrossFit Metcons, when we're doing things like push press, handstand pushups, all of that stuff can be strength training if programmed to a place where it's overloading or, or it's actually stressing your body out. We need stress in our body or stress in our training in order to adapt to it. So we want to make sure we're doing movements that are actually causing us to strength train. Okay. Optimizing our metabolism. Uh, we can also optimize our macronutrients so that we can ensure that we are getting in enough protein to build and maintain lean muscle mass, getting in enough carbohydrates to fuel our muscle building potential. And that's going to really help optimize our metabolism. We can optimize our nutrients, by the way, also optimizing our macros and our nutrients, things like fiber, vitamins, and minerals. What this also does is help improve our hormone function and our insulin sensitivity and other things. So, but optimizing all of that stuff, now we get the wheels spinning a little bit better. We're like greasing the groove. We're, we're getting everything moving a little bit better. So your, your body might be in a better place. We can also optimize our non-exercise activity in our sleep. And what this is going to do is also, once again, help with insulin sensitivity a little bit, help regulating blood sugar. And then we can minimize too much processed food consumption and alcohol, which both will obviously negatively impact uh, metabolism overall, especially alcohol. Uh, when we have alcohol in our body, um, our body is going to burn that off first and it's going to spare carbohydrates and fat. So uh, limiting your alcohol intake will help you with metabolic rate and also help with hormones as well. Um, and then going into optimizing your TDEE, which is what most people actually, I'll tell you this, by optimizing this stuff that I'm going to talk to you guys about now, you're going to help with optimizing your metabolism as well. Okay. First things first, spending some time at maintenance, more time eating at maintenance calories than less. Guys, eating at maintenance isn't the time where you're like, I'm just eating whatever I feel like. It's actually like, no, did you actually maximize how much your body should be consuming? Because most people naturally either overeat or undereat. You know, it's just typical, especially if you've been in a, in a diet phase for a long time reminding yourself that your body is now compensated and adapted to the amount of calories you're consuming. And the only way to change that is to feed your body more. So we want to take some diet breaks. We want to build in more time at maintenance. Okay. Next thing is optimizing your food quality. And this comes down to the types of foods you're consuming. Again, ultra processed foods are going to be less thermogenic on the body. So we want to make sure that we're really prioritizing more whole foods a lot of bars and snacks and things like that. Those things are very easily digested. They don't require a bunch of digestion. So think of it this way. The more you chew, the more you burn. So eating a lot of vegetables, a lot of lean proteins and stuff like that is going to be more thermogenic. Protein in particular is going to be more thermogenic. High fiber foods are going to be more thermogenic. And also a lot of those um, high fiber foods you don't absorb all of the calories from them. So they're in, in, also in certain types of nuts as well. So there's also an absorption factor there as well. Eating a lot of processed foods, you are going to be absorbing the majority of those calories. There's not going to be much wasted there. Um, optimizing your macronutrients. I'm going to go into, before we end this, a little bit about my macros simplified um, webinar coming up because this is really important for you guys to realize. Macronutrients play a huge factor. You know, so 
just so a thousand calories is always going to be a thousand calories, whether it's a thousand calories from broccoli or a thousand calories from gummy bears. However, one of those things is going to be obviously utilized, giving you some vitamins and minerals and obviously require a lot more effort than the gummy bears. Right. So know that like optimizing, um, the, the types of foods you're eating is going to be helpful. Um, optimizing your digestion. All right. So this is a very important thing for people to understand. A lot of people, the gut is a whole nother animal right now. And I got to, I'm going to record a podcast on gut health. That's going to be one of my next ones because people are going down the rabbit hole of like, why is my gut a mess? And gut health is really like, it's still kind of in its infancy. I'd like to say, uh, I guess it's kind of like in its toddler phase of the research we have the least amount of research on gut health. So everything is still kind of newer, you know, whereas a lot of the stuff we have about metabolism and calories and all this stuff is like, you know, decades and decades, even hundreds of years old. Whereas, you know, the, the gut health is kind of still like less than 10 to 15 years. So everything is still kind of being worked out. And also these things are so hard to study. So gut health is a big one and optimizing digestion a lot of people focus on things like supplements. You know, I, I should be taking these supplements or I should be avoiding these foods. When in reality, they're doing those two things is actually not fixing the problem. It's putting a band-aid on the problem. Um, optimizing digestion comes down to getting in enough type of enough fiber and the right types of fiber. And when I'm talking gut health, I want you to understand there's a difference between gut health and gut healing. So if you're having gut issues, there might be a different protocol, but for most people, when we're looking to optimize gut health, we want a lot of high fiber. A lot of people don't realize the connection between stress and your gut. Your stress plays a huge factor in digestibility of foods and people have no idea how that happens, but it, it, it's one of the most common problems with why it's one of the most common reasons for gut problems, IBS and all that stuff is all typically triggered by high stress. And you know that because if you deal with those things, you can likely tell me, yeah, I have a really high stress or have a really high stress job, or I'm stressed a lot throughout my day. I don't sleep well. Um, another one is food habits. So if people don't realize of optimizing digestion, they don't look at how they eat. You know, are you chewing your food or are you inhaling it? You know, digestion starts like as we actually are smelling and seeing like, those are the first signs of digestion. A lot of people are on autopilot, mindless eating. And they don't realize that that also affects your digestion. Okay. So that was a little bit longer of an example of one of the things that does affect your energy expenditure, because it's important to talk about. And then we're going to talk about the last part of optimizing your energy expenditure, total daily energy expenditure is moving more throughout your day, like getting up and moving. If you do sit a lot, you might have to make up, make it part of your day to go for a walk in the evening. Like, those are things that you guys can do for your health. It's not just for fat loss. It's for optimizing your overall health. You will feel better if you take some time to get outside. I know that right now, if you're in a colder climate, like this isn't the best time of the year to be walking. So you might want to invest in for yourself for the future, a, some kind of a standing desk. I'm sorry, standing desk, a, uh, under desk treadmill, something to keep at home that like, yeah, you can just do something like that. You can literally watch TV and do it. If you want to, you can multitask yourself. Um, but that's a good one. And then obviously making sure that you're staying consistent with your training, you know, and so that's really going to be it. I think the last one that I want to talk about, and I'm just going to keep, it's not, not the last one I want to talk about, but the one that I keep hammering is understand the importance of optimizing your calorie intake. So if you do feel like your metabolism is sluggish, you do feel like you have a quote unquote damaged metabolism, take a food audit. How much are you actually eating? And actually ask yourself with, with that, you're going to find out one of two things. You're either under, you're underestimating how many calories you're eating, or you are significantly under eating and you might need to work on rebuilding your calorie intake. I like to call it a calorie build and get yourself back up to maintenance before dropping into fat loss. And it's, it's hard because most people want the fat loss. They want to see the body changes and they don't want to take the time to optimize that maintenance, but that is also usually really important. Um, so that is my big long talk on metabolic damage. I'm going to hop over now to my comment section because I haven't been looking and okay, good. So there's not a lot of people that have been commenting, but if this is resonating with any of you guys, please let me know if you have any questions about the metabolism, um, maybe your own journey that you have questions about. I would love to be able to help you guys out. The last thing I'm going to touch on is next week, um, on Monday, 
I am hosting a webinar free. It's next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 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 <laughs> uh, macros simplified. And I am going to be breaking down how to make, how to use a macro-based approach in a much simple, much more flexible way to help you guys achieve fat loss, build muscle, perform better in the gym, optimize your health, and understand how to actually move on from tracking macros. I think that the main reason I want to really go over this in a webinar is because there are people out there that have thought about tracking and getting into macro counting, but they're intimidated by it and they feel like it's overwhelming to them. And then there are people that have used it and felt like they got burned out by it. And then there's people in the middle that don't really know if it's going to work for them or not because they've dabbled in it and they never really saw any results. And I want to go over some of the mistakes people are making. I want to simplify things to tell you guys what actually matters so that you aren't stuck playing macro perfection and also get you guys to understand that you don't have to track your food for the rest of your life to maintain your results. It's a means to get you to a goal, but at the end of it all, you should be learning a lot about the foods that you're consuming in the process so that you don't have to eat the same thing um, every single day to hit your macros and you don't have to continue to track your food forever. Um, so that was the last thing I want to touch on. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this episode. Um, I'm excited to break down episode three of my gains train, uh, coming out this week. I will be probably updating you guys on Sunday or Monday again. I'll try and stay consistent with that. Uh, and typically I do podcasts on Tuesdays, but like I said, I wanted to redo, um, yesterday's podcast and this topic was like on my heart today. So here I am. Um, I hope you guys all have an amazing Wednesday. If you guys need anything, you know where to find me. If you do want to sign up for my macro simplified webinar, even if you want to watch the replay, uh, there is a link in the show notes for you guys to do that, or you can send me a DM totally fine. And, uh, we'll go from there. See y'all later.